Being the elite of the elite, it's not uncommon for the members of the Adeptus Custodes to survive to an advanced age. But whilst they do not age biologically, over time the ravages of war will begin to erode their effectiveness. When a Custodes feels they are maybe a bit slower than their relative youth, we're talking milliseconds of difference here, they leave their service to become Eyes of the Emperor. These former custodian gods travel far and wide across the galaxy in order to watch for the threats to the Emperor and the Imperium at large. With a threat detected, the custodians can be summoned to fight it, even being aided directly by the Eye on some occasions. Which brings me nicely to this conversion of an Eye of the Emperor. I'll be giving this guide two dead animal bits out of five. There aren't many parts required from other kits, but there is quite a bit of sculpting involved. I started out with the new Blade Champion included within Shadow Throne, removing all the parts required to build him and cleaning them up of any sprue tabs or mold lines. The Blade Champion was a good starting point for representing someone who wouldn't be equipped with the full power armor that the regular custodes wear. However, there were still a few superfluous details that I felt I didn't need on my final model. The first of these were the Aquila collar that connected to the back half of the torso. I clipped the bulk of this away before continuing the cut by making some small trims with my scalpel. Whilst this did flatten out the detail in this area somewhat, it would allow me to modify the cloak that comes with the kit to feature a hood as well. With this hooded cloak in mind, I needed to make a few more trims to the back of the torso. The vents in the rear of the armour extend beyond the cloak, so these needed to be removed. Once again, I began with my clippers before trimming things flat with my knife. Again, I didn't need to worry about this area being neat, as it will be covered over shortly. Similarly, I also removed the piece of the vent that was attached to the cloak piece as well. Doing so carefully so as to not damage the cloak itself. Once these trims had been made, I assembled the body and attached the cloak to the back of the torso. With the torso built, I could now start to work on adding a hood to the cloak. To do this, I used some green stuff and so cut and mixed the two colours together. I first wanted to fill in the gap between the shoulders and to do this, I rolled out a few sausages of putty. These were laid into the gap and smoothed out with a combination of metal and rubber tip sculpting tools, making sure to use water or Vaseline to prevent the putty from sticking. I followed the lines and folds that already existed within the cloak's fabric, building this up across the shoulders and up towards the neck. From here, I repeated the laying on of rolled sausages to build up the hood. I began with shorter lumps and increased the length of these as I built up to the rim of the hood. These were also smoothed out to create some realistic folds and creases. While I waited for the green stuff on the cloak to cure, I began to work on the head. I took one of the bare heads from the Blade Champion's kit and to give it a more aged appearance, I chose to add some facial hair. But before I brought in the green stuff, I first removed the tab from below the neck using my clippers and knife. This would give me much more freedom when I came to attach the head and allow me to adjust the angle and position as I saw fit. The head was a little too small to easily hold though, so to make it easier to add the putty to and to paint later on, I decided to add a wire to hold it. I used my pin vise to drill a small hole into the base of the neck and glued a length of 1mm thick wire into place. With the head prepped, I could begin to sculpt the facial hair. I started out with a very small lump and placed this onto the cheek. I flattened this against the cheek and dragged out the putty so that it flared out ever so slightly as it moved towards the jawline. This was then repeated across the other cheek. To join the two sections of putty against the cheeks and to complete the mutton chop style that I was looking to create here, I rolled out a very thin piece of green stuff. This was carefully laid across the upper lip and then blended out into the cheeks. With a sharp pointed sculpting tool, I then began to add some fine lines into the putty. I drew these from top to bottom, leaving narrow furrows behind and simulating the appearance of hair. Once again, I made sure to use Vaseline to prevent the putty from being pulled away from the face. With the mutton chop beard completed, I just needed to leave it to one side and wait for it to cure. While I was allowing the green stuff to harden, I began to work on simplifying the Blade Champion's appearance. In the lore, the eyes of the Emperor relinquish their arms and armour before setting out into the galaxy. 
but I would imagine that it would retain or at least acquire some equipment to assist them in their tasks. To represent this less ornate gear, I began to shave away the symbol from the shin of the boot. My knife was first used to remove some of the larger chunks. From here, I held the blade slightly perpendicular to the boot surface and used a scraping motion to completely flatten the surface. After this process had been completed against both sets of boots, I glued the legs to the torso. I continued the simplification of the armor by removing the fanned counter from the elbow. I clipped away the bulk of the armor before shaving back any remaining plastic so that the shape of the elbow guards was retained. To keep the more lightly armored appearance, I chose not to use the shoulder pads that came with the kit. I couldn't just omit the shoulder pads though. The arms themselves would first need a little work. I used that same shaving method as before to flatten out and remove the contact points from each shoulder before gluing the arms into place against the torso. I wasn't quite done with the green stuff just yet though. Now that the arms were in place, there were a few more adjustments to be made. The first of these was to fill in the gaps in the shoulders. This was fairly straightforward to achieve and just involved filling the hole with the putty and then smoothing out the top so that it blended into the rest of the arm. In addition to this, I also added yet another roll of putty to the cloak, just above the right shoulder. The cloak itself was designed to work with the shoulder pads, so without these, the fabric was pushed back just a little bit too far. Like before, I made sure to smooth out the green stuff so that it followed the flow of the existing fabric. Another omission that I had made to the model were the two pieces of armor that would normally hang from the waist of the Blade Champion. These didn't require any trimming, but I still needed to cover up some of the weird folds and creases in the fabric where they would normally have fitted. Rather than trimming or filling them with putty, I grabbed a bolt pistol holster and some pouches from the Assault Intercessor kit. All I needed to do was to trim the small raised ridge from the back to allow them to fit more comfortably against the belt. And with that, the model just needed a suitable paint scheme, which then left me with this. And here we have the completed Eye of the Emperor. To follow the law, I decided to paint the model with dark colors and use techniques similar to those that I displayed in my previous Black Templar painting guide, which I'll link to above. I kept things fairly simple, nothing too ornate with the armor being painted in silver rather than the iconic golden power armor of the Custodes. I also painted the hair as grain to relate the advanced years of this model. The most ornate aspect of this miniature is the blade, I'm pretty sure that this weapon doesn't see much use under normal circumstances. Wielding a golden-hilted glowing power sword in some underhive wouldn't likely go unnoticed. Instead, I imagine that this weapon and his cuirass are items that are only bought out when they are really needed. It was great to tackle a simpler conversion here as well. Sometimes you don't always need to use parts from a dozen different kits to create a new-looking model. But I'd love to hear what you thought about this guide and if you have any ideas for other conversions that you'd like to see me tackle in the future, then let me know in the comments below. But before I go, let me say a huge thank you to my ever generous supporters. Currently, my top supporters on Patreon are Jonathan Hart, Ryan Little, Stuart Smith, Tim, Berserker, Daniel Dowling, Dakota the Destroyer, Jake, Jeremy Kaup, Jesse Smith, Casper Limborg, Mr. Grimm and Sweatsman. So a big thank you to you guys, and if you also support me on Patreon, buy me a coffee, or you just use my affiliates links, then it is the kind-hearted people such as yourselves that allow me to fund the kits and tools required to build these conversions. And so until next time, thanks for watching, and goodbye.